surrender, you bastard. No way without that. That's rough. You want to counter offensive? So go and try to storm by yourself. I set it to the point. Grenade! He's got a grenade! I walked up and there was a grenade pin lying near him. I didn't believe it until the last. I thought that this is possible only in movie. These are the soldiers from the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade who take part in the most brutal and difficult battles. In this episode, they will analyze their battle, the assault on the fortified positions of the Russians in the forest belt. So without further ado, let's get down to business. That was our start. This is where it all started. We were taken to the concentration point. We were waiting for the command to advance to the assault point. We waited there for a very long time. At first, there was an assumption that we would not be used. The other two assault groups would be enough. But it happened that there was a lot of resistance, and there was a lot of enemy infantry. And literally after this dance, in 15 minutes, we already set out. Here is the force bell. It's about to start. This is the creepiest moment of the assault. The actual journey there. Yes, the scariest thing is advancing to the point of assault. I always feel like the fun is about to start. Here is Gas, working with his machine gun, with a phrase, Good morning, bitches. Here I am, hurrying the lads so that they fly in the shelter belt faster because it is dangerous to stay in the open area for a long time. Moving on. Here, the essence of this entry is to pour the maximum density of fire so that no one would even think about looking out of anywhere. And afterwards, we asked the POWs, lads, how did you like our assault? They themselves said that everything was shooting all around us. We didn't understand what was flying and from where. We holed up in the dugouts. One said, I don't know what you were shooting with, but it even made holes in the dugout. It was our Browning gunner who was pounding the dugout with armor-piercing rounds. That is, we created exactly what we wanted. The catch of all of this was that when we first engaged in the battle, we were told that there were five people sitting there and they were resisting because they had wounded many of our lads from the 4th platoon. Each of them had two or three bullet wounds. And I made the decision that immediately after the launch, we needed to establish fire control and quickly run one by one into the shelter belt. I immediately divided my eight men into two subgroups, on the right and on the left flank. Then I divided fours into twos, and already in twos, we were moving something like a wedge. Two twos on the right flank, two twos on the left, and two more pairs a little on the rollback of 15 meters, closer to the middle, but not in the middle. Because in practice, the middle of the shelter belt is always occupied by a machine gunner. And in order to prevent our losses from the enemy's machine gun, we stretched out in a wedge. It helped us. Surrender, you bastard. No way without that. That's it. Here, reading you. Save ammo. Moving to the force bell. Enemy there, ahead. And there were many of them. I was very satisfied with the work of our two machine gunners, Fanta with the M249 and Gas with the PKM. Save ammo. Don't shoot all at once. In front of the M, in the middle. The lads managed to do it all, to hold sectors, to clear the dugouts, and to throw grenades. All of it. I had to constantly shout, save ammo, because sometimes they get too carried away. 
And first of all, you need to reach at least the first strong point in order to clear it and then replenish your own supplies with the enemy's ammunition. Oh yeah, another very creepy thing was moving along the forest belt here, because the Im was driving on the right flank. The Im is very cool, of course. It has a nice armor. The crew is more likely to survive when hit by RPGs, ATGMs. But damn, it is such a magnet for all the artillery. To walk alongside it is pure fear. All the 120 millimeter, 82 millimeter mines, all of them fly not exactly at it, but rather at us. And we try to get the M rolling somewhere like 100 meters behind us, so that it rolled in, did the job, rolled back, because the orcs are very afraid of it. We took prisoners, and they were even saying, what the hell is that thing you've got shooting? The big caliber one. I'll throw a grenade. Come on. That's right. Here it flew at full tilt. Move around from the right to the left. Fast. So why I said, move around the dugout from right and left, because the Russians sometimes make two to three exits, and it's difficult for two people to clear. It's better when you start pincer moving on them, so that no one runs out from behind and throws a grenade at you near the main entrance. Stop! The machine gunner almost hit me on the fingers here. Yeah. Shoot your AK to the side there. Go with him. I'll finish clearing here. Enter it. Damn, they love to dig those. Yeah, such burrows, like mice. Both two-room apartments and one-room apartments. None. Ammo. Shoot, shoot, it's jammed. Damn, gas can't do without those jams. In every single assault, if a magazine won't fall out for him, the jam will happen. What's in there? Anything in there? Right, yes, that way, that way. Vodja there. Now, you lift it, and I'll spray it in there. Lift that one. That one? Is there a dugout too? Yes, lift it. I lifted a lot there, of course. There could be two options. There could have been an enemy sitting there waiting for you to lift it up and then snap me. Nah, no one's here. Checked it. Move to the next one. That one. Come on, you've got your flashlight. That's it. We've already thrown grenades into this dugout. Go in there. Two people to dread. That's it. Here, reading you. That's it. What's the situation with the dugout? We're clearing them, bro. Haven't chased them out yet. What's there? Get in. Clear here. Going into the dugout after you've thrown a grenade there is total ass, damn it. You just choke there for two minutes. Let's move. Movement. The most important thing is to check every hole, every pit. 
In general, the difficulty of these shelter belts on the canal is that the Russians set up platoon strong point after 150 to 200 meters. Then there are more strong points, and so a strong point after strong point. Another difficulty was that this shelter belt was very wide. And there was a lot of burrows, trenches. There were no trench lines as such. There were mainly dugouts, burrows, and in some areas of the forest belt, it was very difficult to notice them. It is preferable to find them all, because one to two enemies may be sitting there. So you've cleared everything. You've already been replaced by other lads. You've entrenched yourself. And then those orcs may crawl out and cause much trouble. Here, let me. Hold your grenade, boys. Ours. Let's clearing there. Plus. Run away. Get in. Moving forward. Is there a radio? Yes, but it's off. It's here, but uh, off at these moments. When a grenade is thrown into the dugout, and in theory, you need to go in with a flashlight, check and clean it. Not only is there smoke and, well, this is unrealistic. You go in there and you start to choke. Therefore, there are such shortness of breath as we just heard it, and grunts, right, right, and grunts. And thoughts like, damn, Datsik, we're just sick of you forcing us in there. I know what you're thinking about. Move it. Let's go. I kept shouting. Faster. Let's move. Let's move. Timing. The sooner you can clear it up and take the defense, it's less likely that their artillery will get their shit together and start blasting. The guys say, well, how much longer? May we have a five-minute break? And I'm like, no. Forward, forward. And here, we got into the first cluster shot of Grad. The camera doesn't show how Datsik hugged me like I was his own child, snuggled up to me. I realized that if it landed somewhere near, and I thought, it would rip my legs out, damn it. And I just recently got some tattoos on it. You know, it seemed to me that if I hugged Bodia, everything would be fine. Well, you see, everything was fine. We're still alive. And as luck would have it, there was not a single burrow around. At that point, we'd just passed their strong point that was about 150 meters away. That time I thought to myself, well, now the fragments will catch up with me. And this is my group of four walking along the left flank of the shelter belt. And the group of four of the late Plohoy went along the right flank of the shelter belt. Here was Plohoy at the head of the group, followed by Halachana. The squad leader Halachana was followed by machine gunner Gas, and Gas was followed by medic Vecher. But Vecher, in my opinion, as he said, was the only one who managed to react. And there was a burrow near him, and the last moment he dived into it like a fish, so he was the only one from the group who didn't get wounded. That was rough. That is the Halachana camera. So the grad rocket landed one and a half meters away from him, and it landed exactly on the deceased Plohoy. But the point is, Although Halachina was wounded, he was wounded by an empty casing from a PKM. A cartridge casing, not even a fragment from the grad missile itself, flew into his leg. He did great. He quickly pulled himself together and immediately rolled back to us. Who's WIA? Damn, my side, brother. I can't carry on. A small fragment flew in Gas's side. He was lucky it didn't hit his internal organ.
That is scary shit. Grad was firing from a short distance, and because of this, the density of its shells was six to seven meters. Damn it. Pull back further. Let's go. We rolled 200 meters back, and we took up defense there. The lads were given first aid. We sat there for a while, waited for their mortars to cease their work, and then another grad cluster round blasted. And only then we advanced to carry on with the clearing. Into the burrows. Get back into the burrows. Into the burrows. You wanted counteroffensive? So go and try to storm by yourself. I said to the point. I just like how everyone says, come on, kick their asses. We believe in you. You're the best. And they don't understand the cost all this comes at. Two shells just landed near us like this. And we don't have that kind of shit that we got our asses kicked. Rolled back, turned around and fled. No, we pulled back, took up defense, provided med, aid, put the lads on evac, the lads left. We added more people to our group from another assault group, and we moved on. We don't give a shit. There is a task. We need to advance. We need to clear those, no matter how hard it is. We need to clear it. Take up the defense and hold it, because in one to two days, the enemies constantly try to assault on those positions. But they fail. Come on, bro. I believe in you. You are powerful. Gas is like nothing ever happened. He got a fragment at his side, and he's like, come on, I believe in you. Hal is also glad he's lying down, thinking, now I'll arrive there and chow down on a burger right away. Come on, remove his gear, lads. Let's remove it now. It's okay. We're not tearing anything off, nor cutting anything. Our medics work very promptly, quickly, and professionally. Many thanks to them. You were taken prisoner by the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade. No one will harm you. No one will beat you. I told them, you will now show us the path where your wounded are. Maybe some missed ones, and you will now lead me to them. That small one, what's his name? Korshin? Yeah, Korshin. He dared and said, yes, I will show you now. Which way? Lead us. Come on, hurry up. So the first thing I did was approach him. Here, the camera shows a pin clearly. When I took his rifle away, I didn't see that pin at first. But I was alerted by this orc holding his hand, like under his chest. The fact that he didn't extend them, like he was surrendering at all. I asked him, what do you got? Bent down and saw a grenade pin near his face. Damn it, grenade! He's got a grenade! Run! I ran away, then ran back again and saw that he was nicely spread around the shelter belt. Well, I thought, very nice. One less fool. I walked up there and there was a pin lying near him. You look so happy here. I didn't believe it until last night. I thought that this is possible only in the movies. Amen, Moscow. These were mainly their contract soldiers fighting back from the 72nd Brigade. They were the most well outfitted, shot and equipped. Right. They had both documents and phones with them. And if those mobilized look like hobos, these are more solid, you know. Just so you understand, some of their rifles had just been brought in because those rifles were brand new, out of storage and never fired. A fellow is already KIA and his rifle hasn't even been fired yet. Another catch in moving along the top of the canal was that, in short, it was all littered with PMNs. And one wrong step to the right or the left would cost you a leg. Just in case. What's up, Odie? So, Bodie found this old man? Right, that was already the second half of the assault. 
he was already preparing to surrender. He wasn't going to put up any resistance. I was walking along the shelter belt and saw that he had put his stuff next to him like this. And he placed his fist together like this and he was sitting there, just like a flower. I'm from a corrective colony, from a prison camp. I got it. They gave us six months here and then our criminal charges would be cleared. And before, got it. Get some water from the dugout over there. Before our children. We would be clean before our children. I was in the dugout then, so... Okay. It's fine. He's clean. Come on, walk. Join your friends. <laughs> He had a fine occasion to get acquainted with them, because they didn't know who was sitting there. Does any of you want some juice? Demons? Poor things. How greedily they were drinking that water and smoking those cigarettes. I asked them, damn, don't you have anything to smoke, really? Regarding those POWs, there are two types of them. Those who are contract soldiers and Storm Z or whoever they are. Two of them were convicts. They said, we didn't drink or eat for five days. I asked why. They brought us there at night, threw us into a pit like that, told us not to move. I said to them, well, you had your fellow contractors sitting there. They had waffles, juice, water. Why didn't you go to them and get some food? After all, you're all together Russia. According to those two convicts, they said that two of their men went to ask for water, and they were shot by their friendly contractors. I am very satisfied with the work of my group. If it hadn't been for the case when we got under the grad shelling in the open area, the entire group would have remained whole and unharmed. We suppressed their infantry very quickly and effectively. The enemies were stunned. They didn't even think of resisting us. In the previous assaults, we also had shellings from Grad, from Solsepion, from choppers. But for me, this assault was the hardest. It was tough for me, not because I was tired, but because of how our casualties happened. Plohoy and, and others. We lost very close people during this assault. On the whole, the task was accomplished. There was no such case that we started to storm, rolled back, and the task was not completed. All tasks assigned by the higher command are carried out by our company. If you were interested in today's episode and would like me to continue doing episodes like this next, then let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. You can support the author by the details in the description. Thank you.